For everything that Seattle has come to symbolize about the great Northwest, add one more. It is, for better or worse, the birthplace of grunge. The artists I've covered have been global superstars and rock stars who suffered tragic lives. The stories I've covered are widely known, but the one grunge icon whose story has not been told is that of Screaming Trees vocalist, Mark Lanigan. Scott Weiland, one of rock's most distinctive voices, has died. Shannon was found dead in the band's tour bus in New Orleans on Saturday afternoon. Mark Lanigan has died at the age of 57. And Andrew Wood was pronounced dead from complications resulting from a drug overdose. Wayne Staley was found dead in his Seattle home on Friday. Mark Lanigan was born on November 25, 1964, in Ellensburg, Washington. Lanigan came from a family of, quote, criminals, convicts, and hillbillies. Lanigan's mom was a schoolteacher, and his father was a carpenter. His mother was supposedly verbally abusive. Mark turned to petty theft in his teens and frequently stole from kids at his school. In his own words, quote, the only period of the day I didn't steal was during my gym class. Mark traded in all of his comic books for records after finding his love of punk music. Lanigan was also an alcoholic from an early age. Drinking heavily whilst he was still in high school, Lanigan and his friend decided to rob and destroy his parole officer's van one night, and on the way home, was involved in a rollover car accident which partially scalped him and ripped off his friend's thumb. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison and did his time. After Lanigan was released, his legs were crushed by a tractor in a freak accident, permanently damaging his legs. His girlfriend left him for her manager at her work, and he had reached rock bottom. Mark got a job as an under-the-table debt collector, retrieving stereos and VCRs from customers who did not pay back the money. Lanigan recorded his first ever demo during this time with his brother's friend, who wrote his music. Mark then joined his friend's band, mustering up the courage to perform vocals. They named their band after a guitar pedal, The Screaming Tree. Six months after starting, the band recorded their first demo, called Other Worlds. The band also released a full-length album, called Clairvoyance, on Velvetone Records. Whilst touring, a member of the band, Lee, pulled over at a gas station, pulled all of the band equipment out, and started destroying it. Mark jumped in and hit Lee in the face numerous times to no effect. Lee then took his duffel and walked out into the world. Lee was coaxed back into the van and the band went home. Lee would spy on Mark if he was with women and would do other odd things. Mark was clean and sober for this first stint, but quickly turned back to old habits whilst on tour. One afternoon, Mark got a call from his friend, Dylan Carlson. He wanted Mark to come see a band play that night. He was impressed with the bass player's energy and tall frame and wanted to recruit him for Screaming Trees. The vocalist, a left-handed guitar player, came up to Mark after the show telling him, quote, Thank you so much for coming out. If you want to do something musical together, please give me a call. They exchanged numbers and the name on the paper was Kurt. A few weeks later, Mark got a call. A man on the other end said, quote, Chris Novoselic here. I play bass in Nirvana. Are you still looking for a bass player? I can't stand playing with Kurt anymore. Everything has to be his way. Yeah, man, we're still looking, Mark replied. Mark told Chris he should work things out with Kurt before joining the band, and Chris didn't end up joining Screaming Trees. Mark and Kurt Cobain had become close friends and got along well. Mark decided after differences between the trees to get on his motorcycle and drive to Seattle. He got a minimum wage job in Seattle's University District and started dating. <laughs> 